Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. Today we're going to talk about raster graphics. Specifically, we're going to focus on the topic of color and memory and how that affects file size. So raster graphics are the most common type of computer graphic you're going to work with. In this slide, I found a raster image of the Earth, which I put on the left-hand side of the slide. And on the right-hand side, I zoomed in on the curvature of the Earth so you can see what the raster graphic is made up of. And as you can see, it's basically a grid. Each of the squares in that grid is called a pixel. In other words, a picture element or element that makes up your picture. Now, when we go to save a raster image, the file size will be determined by the number of pixels in our grid. Uh, so the larger our graphic is, or the more pixels we have, the larger the file size is going to be. The smaller the graphic, the smaller the file size. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if I need to reduce the file size, I can just make the image smaller. And yes, that will solve that problem. But there's a lot of times in multimedia where you can't resize your graphic. You need it to be a specific size for one reason or another, um, and that means you can't resize it. So how else can I influence the file size of my graphics without changing the physical size of the graphic? And the answer to that is color. But before we can talk about color, we need to understand how computers store memory. So in order to talk about computer memory, I thought we'd watch a quick video about an alcoholic robot and see how he thinks about memory as a computer. Bender, what is it? Oh, what an awful dream! Ones and zeros everywhere! Ugh, and I thought I saw two. It was just a dream, Bender. There's no such thing as two. Okay, so... As you know, computer memory is basically ones and zeros. That's how Bender thinks. That's how all computers think. Um, but that's not how they always worked. This is the EDSAC computer. It's a very old, old computer. And you can see it's made up of tubes and knobs and switches. And that's how the machine worked. It basically was a series of switches that were either open or closed. And whether switches were opened or closed allowed us to save a piece of information. And so that's where our ones and zeros come from. Basically, it's like a light switch. It's either on, so it's a one, or it's flipped off, so it's a zero. So all the switches in this machine, they're either on or off, and allows us to save information that way. In the old computers, uh, sometimes there was a problem where the switches, the contact plates couldn't connect. And that was either because they were dirty or some other reason. So somebody had to go in and clean those computers. And one time, they found a moth in the machine. And that's what was preventing the contact plates from connecting, and it was causing a computer bug. And that's where we get that term from. So it's kind of an interesting little historical piece, but let's get back to color. Since we know that computers are made up of ones and zeros, if I give one bit of data for a, a graphic, that means I can map two colors to that one bit of information. So my zero could be mapped to the color orange for the Orioles, or the color purple for the ravens, but I'm limited to two colors, but any two colors, black and white, red, blue, you name it. If I start allocating more memory, so instead of one bit, I give it four bits or a nibble, because programmers think they're very clever when they name things, um, that gives me up to 16 combinations of ones and zeros, right? So now I can map 16 colors given four bits of memory. If I give more memory, 8 bits, I can have 256 colors, up to 32 bits, which gives me over 4 billion colors to work with. Now, do you really need 4 billion colors? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. It depends on your graphic, your audience, and your project, what you're working on. So this brings us to a concept called the fundamental problem of multimedia. And we'll see this over and over as we work with different types of media. And that's balancing your asset quality with file size. Yes, we could save all of our graphics with 32-bit memory, and that would give us 4 billion colors and the best possible graphics we could have, but would also be really large file sizes. And so there are times when you have a limit to how much memory you can use for a project. Think of smartphones. There's only so much memory, and if you download an app that takes up 90% of your smartphone's memory, you're probably not going to keep that app very long. It's a little too heavy for that device. Um, so this is the other way that we can affect file size when it comes to images. You can always resize an image smaller, or you can change the memory allocated for the color palette, reducing the number of colors, but also reducing 
the file size of your image. That's it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next one.